There's you've you brought two things to my mind. One was what real love is like when you really love your family, you don't love them because they change. Yeah. You're patient with them as they try to change. That's what love yeah. is because they may or may never get to the other side and the other thing that came to mind is something my teachers would often tell me, my monk teachers, they would often repeat to me that you're never trying to get someone to the next step in your journey. You're trying to get them to the next step in their journey. Yeah. And I think you're so right that when we're doing self-work, we are constantly preaching to other people about the things we want to hear yeah. and the things we want to do. Yeah. And like self-work can just be so different for so many people. You know, like my morning workouts, I swear that's my self-work. My drive in the car every day, blasting whatever music I want to, like that is my meditation. That's my zone. And that works for me. You know, when I need help and I need help figuring out different parenting things and different methods that I can use, I will reach out and get the help that I need when I need it for mm -hmm. sure. But I also think there's just, there's no like right method of what works for everyone, you know, it's yeah. like whatever works for you, good for you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like when, when people see you and even, even now as you're talking, you have so much trust in yourself or trust in your inner voice. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're, I don't believe you're saying I always get it right, or this is the only way. What you're actually saying is I've learned to trust my voice. And I wonder, was there a time when you didn't trust that voice and or can you remember the first time where you started to hear it? Like, I remember the first time I really started to hear my voice deeply was probably when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And that's when I could hear this voice inside of myself that was like, Jay, this is who you are. This is what you care about. This is what matters to you. You don't need to be this or be that or do it this way. And I remember I started listening to it then. And now that inner voice is really loud. Yeah. It's always there. God, I wish I listened to my inner voice at 14. <laughs> <laughs> when, do you remember when you first started like, because when I'm speaking, hearing you now, you're just like, yeah, like I'm very comfortable with people being themselves and I'm comfortable totally. being who I am, which is beautiful. But when did that, I feel so many people want to live that way, but that's the thing we all struggle with. It definitely didn't come right away. You know, I was a people pleaser and I would make decisions based off of other people's happiness for so long. And I would say, honestly, in the last few years, definitely at 40, you know, I figured it out of just following my happiness, which was really, I think, an important place for me to get to because I always put other people's happiness over my own. And it doesn't mean you disregard other people's feelings and it doesn't mean you don't care and you don't love them, but it is a great place to be when you finally put yourself first. And I will say that took a long time. And that was like relying on other people for confidence in business decisions. And it's, it's great to have your team and to always like bounce ideas and make sure that you're collectively picking the right choice and, and work thing for you. But true confidence where you feel you're making the right decisions, you know you got it, you are thinking about yourself first and not just in a selfish way, but like in a protecting your heart way, mm. it feels really good. And I might not have gotten there until I was literally 40.